The ability to accurately tune your violin is the foundation of a successful career. The wonderful part is that if you have pretty good strength in your fingers and your violin is set up properly, you should be well on your way by the end of this lesson. Yet, even if your fingers are weak and your violin isn't set up properly, this lesson will still show you how to tune any violin as accurately as is possible. Too many teachers skip this part, but don't do it, because it's the most important step of all. You see, it doesn't do much good to carefully tune your violin if the tone is bad, or if the pitch wanders out of tune within the first couple minutes. So, take a moment and check to see that your bridge is slightly tilting back the way it should, and that the feet match the belly perfectly. Also, what so many people overlook and sometimes bring their instruments into violin shops for a sound adjustment for when they could and should do it themselves. And that is to make sure that the top of the bridge is perfectly straight across without any twists or curves. If your bridge does need adjusted, take a few minutes to watch the video how to really adjust the violin bridge. Then, if you really want your violin to sound the very best that it can, and to be as easy to tune as possible, watch Paganini's secret of breaking violin strings, and what to check before replacing your violin strings. That video covers all of the little details about what makes your strings move smoothly across the top of the bridge, over the nut, and around the pegs. The thing is, that if your strings don't move smoothly and evenly, you not only risk breaking them, your strings will have uneven tensions pulling them out of tune. And as far as intonation goes, you'll be chasing your tail forever. The pegs are, of course, the most important part of tuning. And nothing sounds better, and there is nothing more wonderful than a properly fitted set of pegs and a single fine tuner on the E string. At the same time, most people can barely tell the difference in tone, at least on an inexpensive instrument, when using multiple fine tuners, a fine tuner tailpiece, or different types of pegs. So for now, go with what you have and feel good about it. But when the time does come that you can afford a fine instrument set up properly, Come back and review this next part of the lesson so that you understand and gain the skill necessary to enjoy what you've invested in. Violin pegs must be carefully shaved smooth and round so their taper matches the holes on either side of the peg box perfectly. If the large end is even slightly tighter than the small end, the peg will be sticky and it becomes a true game of chance whether you'll be able to stop rotating the peg at the correct pitch. On the other hand, if the small end of the taper is tighter than the large end, the peg will turn smoothly, but it will also want to slip and not hold its position. Because of this, especially if the peg is out of round at all. People sometimes get frustrated and push the peg in way too hard in an effort to get it to stay, and they break the scroll. Rather than ever push a peg in way too hard, if it really is an emergency, it's far better to wrap the string around the peg so that the windings bind against the wall of the peg box to hold the peg in place 
until you can get it repaired as soon as possible. Yet, when the tapers are just right, and with peg dope to protect and condition the surfaces, the pegs will turn as smooth as butter and then stay in place perfectly. The phenomenon is called slip stick, <laughs> and it takes a slight amount of inward pressure while turning the pegs to consistently take full advantage of it. This slip stick, also known as stick slip, <laughs> depending upon who's talking and which direction you're going, is why we rotate each peg back just a little bit before tuning the string up to the proper pitch. Otherwise, if the string is just barely flat, which is almost always the case if you practice and tune regularly, the peg will jump past the correct pitch and you'll have to bring it back down anyway in order to finish tuning it back up. Because you should always finish tuning your strings while going up in pitch, never down. The reason is that as the peg pulls the string across the nut, it leaves a little extra tension in the string above the nut, which helps keep the string up to pitch much longer than it would otherwise. This is especially important when you're standing under the heat of the spotlight. And this is also why you should never push down above the nut or stretch the string below the nut to fine tune your instrument, unless it really is an emergency and you don't have the time to tune your string properly. Because even though you can temporarily get the string in tune sometimes, it will not hold its pitch as well. And most of the time, all it takes is one aggressive bow stroke during your performance to pull the string right back out of tune. Since most of this lesson was handed down from Giuseppe Tartini, the founder of the Romantic School of Music, let's start at the very beginning, when even the smallest child was required to learn how to tune their instrument with no fine tuners. Also, remember that even when you have fine tuners on all four strings, when each fine tuner reaches the end of its travel, you have to unscrew the adjuster and tune the string back up to pitch using the peg. Now, if you've never tuned a violin string before this moment, take a moment right now to look at the angle of the A peg and remember what the angle looks like. Because some students really do have a difficult time hearing the pitch especially the first time, and they sometimes go right past it and break the string. And we don't want that. <laughs> so, at the beginning, always take a moment to look at each peg before you begin tuning it, while remembering that unless your string has come loose, it's not necessary to rotate your pegs more than about 20 or 30 degrees during the entire tuning process. Also, while you're learning how much pressure to apply in on the peg while you're rotating it, don't let go of a peg until you're confident that it's tight enough to hold the string in place. If you start to let go and the peg begins to rotate back down at all, just push the peg in a little and rotate it back to the original angle you started with. Knowing all of this before you begin tuning your strings does make this a longer video, <laughs> but it usually saves most new students a lot of unnecessary time and grief later on, especially when they don't have a teacher looking over their shoulder to help them. Once you've tuned your violin a few times, you can pluck the strings and tune your violin while standing up, as long as you cradle it against your leg or belt line. But especially at the beginning, 
it is best to sit down so that you can relax and focus on the task at hand. It's best to support the violin with both legs and then place your left hand on the shoulder and against the side of the neck. And then grasp the A string peg firmly between your thumb and index finger. And anytime you're rotating the peg, make sure that you're always pushing in with a slight to moderate amount of pressure, which on a perfectly fitted peg is about three pounds force or 1.3 kilograms. But your pressure can vary on how much it takes to hold the peg in place. So pluck the A string and then bring the top of the peg back towards you just slightly that'll lower the pitch and then rotate it back up all the time pushing in. Now don't let go if you feel the peg slightly rotate back in your fingers. That just means you haven't pushed in hard enough. And if that happens, don't panic. Just push the peg back in a little harder and then bring it back up, making sure it stays in place. You should always tune the A string first because it's the only pitch given in most orchestras and it's the only string that perfectly matches the piano and almost all electronic tuners as well, except for a Peterson Strobo tuner set to violin mode. Yes, the G, D, and E of pianos and most electronic tuners are close, but they're not close enough to tune a violin to perfect fits and to experience everything that your violin has to offer. Because of this, I had a piano specially tuned here with the D, G, and E keys at perfect relative fifths just for this lesson. And to access these, just go to the Romantic School of Music and click on Tuning Pitches. They're fast, they're free, and they have no ads to slow you down. So, Pluck the A string, preferably toward the middle, with the meaty part of the tip of your thumb, so you get a nice clear sound. Then lower the pitch slightly on your peg, just like before, while pushing it in slightly. And then bring it back up, but this time to match the pitch. Even if your A string is in perfect pitch before you ever begin, you should always lower the pitch and bring it back up at least once before you begin playing. Because in addition to achieving the proper tension above the nut, as the humidity changes, the tightness of your pegs can change also. And <laughs> you never want your pegs coming loose during a performance if you travel to a drier climate. So let's try it again. Everyone's ears are different, but as a general rule, it's best not to spend too much time getting the string up to pitch. Otherwise, you'll be dealing with the sticky part of the slip stick all of the time, and your ears can begin playing tricks on you, especially if you use a constant reference pitch and your mind starts wondering which note is which, which does happen quite a bit to many young students. Yet everyone's ears are different, so try different speeds and constant pitches to see what's best for you. And for those who really are hard of hearing and who are here because they watched my video about never being too old to play the violin, this would be a good time to pull out your Peterson Strobo tuner. Or it may even be the time to purchase one. <clears throat>
And then you follow all the same instructions that I've said so far and that will happen in the future. Uh, the difference is that you'll be tuning your strings until the display stops rotating at the right note. And from here on out, the Peterson Strobo Tuner will become your constant compa companion. Yet, if there's any chance that your hearing really isn't that bad, now would be a good time to challenge yourself and train your ears along with everyone else how to tune without an electronic tuner and only use the Peterson as a double check later on, as everyone should. Because as much as I love this tuner, don't use it as a constant crutch unless you absolutely have to. But if you do have to, more power to you, and welcome to the Romantic School of Music and the unique and wonderful world of playing the violin. If you're not aware already, Beethoven was almost completely deaf when he wrote one of the greatest violin concertos in history. Now switch hands and tune the D string. Next is the G string. And then the E string. The E string is the most difficult, and you need to push in harder than on the other strings because it has the most tension. And to make absolutely sure that the peg doesn't come loose when you only use the E tuner for extended periods of time. And yes, everyone should practice tuning their E string using the peg, even if you have a fine tuner. That way you know exactly what to expect. And you know how to do it when you reach the end of your fine tuner's travel and have to back the screw out and tune it up with the peg. Now, we tune our violin all over again, or at least double check it, because as each string is tuned, especially if you move the pitch down more than you really need to, the strings pull the top of the bridge ever so slightly forward, and it can change the pitch of the other strings, especially when tuning the D and G strings. I've also included a link that has all four pitches tuned at perfect fifths, one right after the other. Even if that went pretty well, take some time to play around. <laughs> and even though you shouldn't tune your strings to higher pitches than they were made for, make sure to overtune each one just a little bit and listen carefully because it's not uncommon for some students to approach the perfect pitch but never quite get there.
Next, grasp one of the pegs firmly, rotate it slightly, and pull it out until it comes loose and doesn't stay in place. Then, push it back in to see how much pressure it takes to hold it in place. But before you let go, make sure that you push it in a little bit more to make sure it really does stay in place. We do these things because no violinist should ever be afraid of their strings or pegs. At this point, about half of all students can pluck their strings and tune their violins fairly accurately. Yet for others, the hearing part isn't that easy. And they find that matching notes is like learning a foreign language, especially for those who have not grown up around musical instruments. <laughs> and these next few minutes of the lesson are especially for them. Okay, and for you and me also, because it's fun. There is music and pitches all around us, just waiting to be discovered. And if you're willing to get rid of all of your inhibitions and sing duets with them, you will quickly be able to match any note and tune your violin to perfection for the rest of your life. I know that sounds unbelievable, especially if you've tried and failed before, or consider yourself tone deaf. But if you can hear at all, and you will pursue this game with the enthusiasm of a small child grasping for sweets, the chances are that you will succeed. The thing is, when it comes to matching notes, Success comes more from your state of mind than from doing this exercise. But you still have to do the exercise. And those inhibitions I mentioned earlier? Well, let's get rid of them right now. And it is best if there are people all around you for this part of the lesson. So, <clears throat> repeat after me. I can. Sing. La. Next, find something that can produce a ringing tone. And while tapping it, do the best that you can to match it with your voice. La. 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 And while tuning forks, tone generators, la, and even pianos are okay. There's more to this lesson than meets the eye, and it really is best if you can try as hard as you can to discover all of the unique different sounds and pitches around you. One that stands out for me is that each of the lamps on my different benches have a different tone. La. And, of course, one of the best standbys is glassware. La. La. Yet, if you just can't do it, 
always remember that you can sing like a whale. <laughs> and if you do, you will match the pitch somewhere along the way. And when you do, stay there. And if you still have a difficult time, which does happen, especially on items like this lamp, move on to something else with a different sound and try it again, because everyone's ears are different. La, la, la. <laughs> and if you keep practicing, it won't be long before you can match some of the pitches and the thing is, the more you match any pitches, the better you will get at matching all of them. And it will happen rather quickly. <laughs> then, once you feel good about matching the pitches, lower the pitch of your voice just enough so that there's no question that you are singing out of tune or flat. And then bring your voice back up to match the pitch again. La, la, then raise the pitch of your voice higher, which is called being sharp, and slowly bring it back down. La, and finish off by going flat again and coming back up. Yes, this is the secret of learning how to tune a violin for those who are not naturally gifted. But don't stop there. Remember that a small child would keep finding pitches everywhere and make it part of the game to find the most difficult pitches to recognize and then learn to match them as well. La la la, la la la. <laughs> And to really fine-tune your ears, we now listen to Betty Boop. Or any other set of glasses that you or your neighbors, yes, your neighbors might have. And we sort them by pitch, no matter how close the pitches are to each other. While plucking your violin strings and tuning them is the easiest way to learn how to tune your violin, especially if your violin isn't set up properly, bowing the strings while tuning them not only helps to equalize the tension below the bridge and above the nut so that your strings stay in tune much longer, it allows us to hear when we really do attain that perfect fifth between the strings, which produces a far better sound than otherwise possible. The biggest challenge for most students, especially small children and the elderly, is that it's awkward and they struggle to gain the strength and dexterity necessary. Yet when your violin pegs are properly fitted and adjusted to the correct angles, bowing and tuning becomes easy within just a few days, even for the smallest child. Because when your pegs are set to their proper angles, tuning is no longer awkward. And by using the proper grip for each of the pegs, the amount of strength actually needed is drastically reduced. 
So, let's begin. The proper grip for the A string looks like this. With the peg grasped firmly between the middle finger and the thumb, and the index finger placed on the opposite side of the scroll on the volute. This opposing finger allows us to apply as much pressure as we need to hold the peg in place after we let go. And if the peg gets too tight, the edge of the middle finger is used to apply outward pressure to loosen the peg. We tune the A string by dropping the pitch slightly and then bringing it back up until it perfectly matches the reference pitch. If you don't have a tuner, I have included videos with the sound of a grand piano and a church organ playing A440. And remember that none of your pegs ever need to rotate more than 20 or 30 degrees during the entire tuning process, unless you're putting on a new string or a string has come loose. How loudly you play while tuning your strings is determined by how loudly you plan on practicing or performing on stage. One of the greatest mistakes is for a performer to tune very quietly, then go out on stage and have their instrument go out of tune the first time they play forzando. The proper grip for the D string looks like this. With the peg grasped firmly between the index finger and the thumb, with the little finger on the opposite side of the scroll on the volute, which applies pressure. The ring finger can also be placed on the opposite side with the little finger, yet it's usually kept on the same side as the peg to enable us to loosen the peg if it becomes too tight. Yet, choose whatever is the most comfortable for you and for the size of your hand. The goal on the D string is to achieve a perfect fifth with the A string. We do this by dropping the pitch ever so slightly and then raising the pitch back up until the dissonant beat dissipates, <laughs> or in plainer terms, until the warbling and sourness go away and the tone becomes smooth, full, and pleasant. On a fine instrument, this is also when it becomes slightly louder and literally feels like it's coming alive. While well, first learning how to tune your violin to perfect fifths, Make it a point to lower the string enough to really hear the dissonant beat or the warble before bringing the string back up to pitch. That way, as the sound of your violin transforms from irritating to wonderful, you will remember the feeling better and there will be no question when your string really is in tune. <laughs> grip for the G peg is almost identical to the D, except that the ring finger always remains on the same side as the peg, and the hand is opened up and positioned at a slightly different angle. The goal on the G string is to achieve a perfect fifth with the D string, 
so you can see how important it really is to get the D string as accurate as possible. And once again, we drop the pitch slightly, and we want to hear the warble again, and then bring it back up until the tone is pure and smooth. The proper grip for the E string is almost the same as the A, except the hand is held at a slightly different angle and the index finger rests against the back of the D string peg for a more compact grip because the E string has the highest pitch and the most tension, making it the most difficult string to tune. Because of this, as well as the slightly better tone that usually comes with a Hill-style fine tuner, almost all fine violins have one. Because of this, the E string peg doesn't get used very much, and this is why you should always push in on the E string peg a little bit harder than all the others, and why many musicians initially tune their E string while plucking it. And then they finish tuning the E string while bowing and using the fine tuner. And when you're finished, double check that your bridge is still leaning back at the proper angle and that the A string is still in tune and that the D, G, and E strings are all still at perfect fifths. Because as each string is tuned, especially if the pegs were rotated down way too far during the tuning process, or if you just play around with them too much, like I have while making this video, it can pull the top of the bridge forward or distort it, which pulls the other strings out of tune. On the other hand, it's amazing how well a violin will stay in tune if you simply check your bridge once a week and only rotate the pegs a small amount when you're tuning, which will get easier to do the more you practice. So if there's any doubt whatsoever, make sure that the A string is still on pitch one last time and then verify that each of your other strings are still at perfect fifths. Because your violin will thank you for it, and then be able to give you the most beautiful tone possible.